This guide covers all the actions the samurai learns from level 51 to 90 in order. We go over how each action is meant to be used and recommend ways to use it when relevant. We also summarize the changes in the combat rotation at level 60, 70 and 80. In the final summary, we outline an optimized opener and explain how it leads into the general rotation and also touch on the stat priorities of the samurai. I will assume you already know the basics of samurai from level 50 and if not, you can view my samurai starter guide to get caught up. I will also assume you are acquainted with common abbreviations like GCD, OGCD and weaving. And if these abbreviations are unfamiliar to you, I have a short describing GCDs and OGCDs. Note that weaving is the concept of using OGCDs between GCDs. Now then, at level 52, you gain access to the Kenki Gauge and learn the ability Hisatsu Shinten. Whenever you use Gekko, Kasha, Mangetsu, Oka or Enpi, you generate 5 Kenki. Yukikase generates an extra 5 for a total of 10 Kenki and you can hold up to 100. If you take damage while third eye is active, you also generate 10 Kenki. So, if you can predict unavoidable damage, this can be incredibly powerful. Hisatsu Shinten, which I will refer to as simply Shinten, simply does 250 potency worth of damage to a single target. This means that you can consider one point of Kenki worth around 10 potency. You should only use Shinten while under the effect of Fugetsu, the damage buff from Jinpu, and if your party has any damage boosting buffs to share with you, it is beneficial to save Kenki to use multiple Shinten casts during such buffs. Otherwise, you can simply weave Shinten whenever you want. I would recommend trying to stay above 25 Kenki as this can be helpful for actions you learn later. At level 54, you learn the ability Hisatsu Gyoten, shortened to simply Gyoten. At the cost of 10 Kenki, you quickly dash into melee range of your target and deal 100 potency worth of damage. As Gyoten costs 10 Kenki, it still produces 10 potency per Kenki, and so, you can use Gyoten whenever you feel like it to close the gap on an enemy. Any damage loss from not having Hu get so active is offset by the time saved not running to your target. Additionally, if party buffs are boosting your damage, you can use Gyoten to sneak in 10 extra Kenki worth of damage before the buffs run out, occasionally. At level 56, you learn the ability Hisatsu Yaten, shortened to Yaten. The reverse of Gyoten, this ability moves you a safe distance away from your target at the cost of 10 Kenki, but also deals 100 potency worth of damage. Additionally, Yasen boosts the potency of your next NP cast, making it as strong as Shifu or Jinpu, and when considering it also generates some Kenki, it is actually just slightly stronger than them. While Yasen NP isn't a DPS game to perform necessarily, as NP requires a GCD to perform, the combo can heavily compensate for any potential damage and loss you would get from normally running away from the enemy. Yaten should always be your default option for disengaging an enemy and, combined with Gyoten, are both an important reason to always keep around 10 to 20 Kenki at hand at any time. At level 60, you learn the ability Meditate. While Meditate is an ability, it activates the GCD just like a weapon skill, removing the possibility of weaving it entirely. The only purpose of this action is to use it at a point in a fight where you both cannot attack anything, but you're also safe to stand wherever you are. Every 3 seconds, it generates 10 Kenki, so when fully channeled, this results in 50 Kenki over its duration. It is important to keep in mind that you should not use Meditate outside of this very specific scenario. Even if it is incredibly convenient to gain that much Kenki, simply repeatedly casting NP is more valuable if there is an attack target. Since level 50, you have unlocked the Kenki abilities, namely Shinten for translating the resource directly into damage, Gyoten for closing a gap and Yaten for widening it. Make sure to regularly weave Shinten between your GCDs and keep enough Kenki for whenever you need Gyoten and Yaten. Besides this, your rotation is completely unchanged. At level 62, your Kenki generation is boosted to an absurd degree and you learn Hisatsu Kyuten, shortened to Kyuten. At this level, all of your weapon skills except EI Jutsus generate an extra 5 Kenki, meaning those that already generated 5 now generate 10, including NP, and Yukikase generates 15, Third Eye still only generates 10. 
Rakuten is an AoE alternative to Shinten that is superior on three or more targets. This means that in a situation where you may expect AoE combat, saving Kenki for Kuten may be better than spending it all on Shinten outright. As Kuten specifically generates more value per Kenki than all your other spenders when there are three or more targets. At level 66, the potency of Hakase, Jinpu and Shifu are increased slightly. This does not change your rotation. At level 68, you learn the abilities Ikishoten and Hagakure. Ikishoten is a long cooldown that immediately grants you 50 Kenki, enabling you to start a fight with 50. At this level, this does not change very much for your rotation or opener as you need to already be in combat to access it. Making using any of this Kenki on Gyoten, for example, very awkward. Because of this, Ikishoten is weaved after your first GCD in combat. Hagakure is a niche ability that gives you some control over your Sen. It spends all of your Sen as an OGCD to generate 10 Kenki per Sen spent. You should only use this ability if you are sure you know what you are planning to do with it. One example case you can use Hagakure for is In a dungeon or alliance raid, if you have two Sen but both of your buffs have run out, then simply using Hagakure to enter a boss fight with a clean slate may be easier to deal with. At level 70, you learn the ability Hisatsu Guren, shorten to Guren. As an OGCD, this does a large amount of damage in a line, where the AoE component is 3 quarters as strong. On a 2 minute cooldown, this should be used whenever it is available. Fortunately, the cooldown lines up perfectly with Ikishoten, so you should have no worries saving 25 Kenki for this attack. Make sure to only use Guren while affected by Fugetsu, as it is affected by that damage boost. Since level 60, you have acquired an incredible boost to your Kenki generation. While your general GCD rotation is still completely unchanged, Kenki is now an even greater part of your rotation as a whole. You also now have Kyuten as an AoE spender for Kenki that beats Shinten on three or more targets. Your opener has also become significantly more explosive. Use Make Your Shisui as you run up to your target, then use Gekko and weave Ikishoten and Gurin. Then use Higanbana, and after that use Kasha and finish the opener with another Gecko. At level 72, you learn the ability Hisatsu Senye, shortened Senye, which is a single target alternative to Gurin, and they also share cooldown. Gurin should be used for two or more targets, and Senye should only be used for single target situations. At level 74, you learn the trait Enhanced Iaijutsu, which reduces the cast time of Iaijutsus enough that you can now fit a single OGCD after an Iaijutsu. For your opener at present, this does not change very much. However, you can choose to weave Senye one GCD later if you prefer, or weave Shinten for example. The trait is very nice for general quality of life though. At level 76, you learn the ability Tsubame Gaishi. This ability does nothing on its own, but turns into Kaishi Higanbana, Goken or Setsugeke immediately after you use one of these three AI Jutsus. You lose the opportunity to use Tsubame Gaishi if you use any other weapon skill, so the general process is to use them as the immediately following GCD, as all three are on the GCD despite being abilities. On single target, you should use Tsubame Gaishi on the first Midari Setsugeka you can, and generally use it on cooldown as it becomes available. You should undone no circumstances, ever, use Tsubame Gaishi on Higanbana. It is simply too easy to produce a single Sen for this to ever be worth it, and Kaishi Higanbana is not considered a different dot to regular Higanbana, so they will not stack either. If you need to apply two Higanbanas in quick succession, on two target encounters for instance, simply use Hakase Yukikase to do this. On AoE, you should use Tsubame Gaishi on Tenkagoken. Often, due to similar cooldowns, Make Your Shisui will naturally line up to be used to quickly enable you to use Midari Setsugeka as Tsubame Gaishi becomes ready. However, when this is not the case, keep in mind that it takes 8 GCDs to ready Midari Setsugeka normally. As such, if you already have 3 Sen, you can do Hakase Jinpu or Hakase Shifu to play for time by 2 GCDs. Yaten NP can also be used to play for 1 extra GCD. In fact, if you can see that things line up poorly far enough in advance, it takes around 17 seconds to do 8 GCDs. You can use Hakase, Yukikase, Hagakure to sort of waste 2 GCDs, but you need to know this way in advance to make this helpful. 
Each GCD you delay can play for time for a bit more than 2 seconds, and as long as Tsubamegaishi is ready in the next 2 seconds, it is fine. After all, Midari Setsugeka also takes a GCD itself. At level 78, who gets who and Fuka gets a small boost to their effects. The only difference you should feel from this is that Fuka will make your GCD go slightly faster. At level 80, you learn the ability Shoha, and the Kenki gauge is expanded to hold 3 meditation stacks. Whenever you use an EI Jutsu, you gain 1 stack. Every tick of Meditate also grants a stack. Shoha can be used to spend all 3 stacks as an OGCD. Keep in mind that Tsubamegaishi does not grant meditation stacks. You should use Shoha whenever it is available on the first OGCD opportunity, although you can delay it slightly to fit in a raid buff if you anticipate they might be coming soon. Make sure you don't miss out on meditation stacks for it though. While Shoha has a 15 second cooldown, it is not possible to generate 3 new stacks within 15 seconds without employing degenerate strategies, like using Make Your Shisui to perform 3 Higan Banas in quick succession, something you would likely never do anyway. As such, you can mostly ignore the cooldown of Shoha. Since level 70, you have gotten a single tagged alternative to Gurin in Senye. After every third Iaijutsu, you also have access to Shoha as a single target OGCD strike. Every minute, you can use Tsubamegaishi to do two Midari Setsugekas back to back, or Tenkagoken for AoE. Finally, Fugetsu and Fuka got a small boost, and your Iaijutsus take less time to cast. This means your opener can be as follows. Make your Shisui, Gekko, Weaving Ikishoten and Senye, Higanbana, Kasha, Gekko, Hakase, Yukikase, Midara Setsugeka and then use Kaishi Setsugeka. At level 82, you learn the ability Shoha 2, which is an AoE alternative to Shoha 1 for 3 or more targets. You simply use this ability instead on AoE. At level 84, Tsubamegaishi can hold 2 charges. This means you can much more easily use Tsubamegaishi whenever an opportunity to use it with Midara Setsugeka presents itself, without having to use fancy tricks to align it. Additionally, the potency of Gekko, Kasha and Yukikase are slightly increased. At level 86, your AoE combo starter Fuga is permanently upgraded to Fuko, not to be confused with your attack speed buff Fuka. Fuko generates an extra 5 Kenki. Keep in mind that Fuko is a circular AoE around your character, whereas Fuga is a frontal cone attack. This means that all of your AoE attacks are now circle AoEs, except for Gurin, of course. This upgrade does not really change the way you perform your AoE rotation, however. At level 88, Make Your Shisui now also can hold 2 charges. The best way to make the most of this is to always make sure to only use Make Your Shisui when you can plan around using only Gekko or Kasha and Ei Jutsus for its duration. This can either be done by using Gekko or Kasha, followed by Higanbana and then Gekko and Kasha, or by activating Make Your Shisui right after doing Hakase Yukikase. As it is preferable to use the Yukikase Sen for Higanbana, the method of using Make Your Shisui after Hakase Yukikase is preferred. Since the charge system gives you nearly a full minute to plan when to use Make Your Shisui, you should be able to consistently get optimal value out of your Make Your Shisui sequences. At level 90, Ikishoten is upgraded to grant a 30 second buff that enables your new weapon skill, Okinamikiri which is a weapon skill that is functionally identical to an EI Jutsu, down to even granting a meditation stack. It also always critically hits like Mirada Setsugeka. When Ogi Namikiri is used, it automatically changes into Kaishi Namikiri, which you should always use immediately after. Take note that Ogi Namikiri does not have a cooldown, and so its cooldown is directly tied to Ikishoten. As such, you have 30 seconds after every Ikishoten to plan when Oginamikiri is best to use. For instance, you can use the first Oginamikiri in the opener discussed previously, immediately after the Midari Setsugeka Kaishi Setsugeka. To round off, let's first talk about an optimized opener and rotation, followed by more general rotation tips, and then finish off with a brief talk about stat priorities. As Samurai explicitly has no damage boosting cooldowns, the opener we have built on throughout this guide functions as the most efficient at using your cooldowns. Meaning you make the most value of each cooldown when you cannot rely on your team to boost your damage. In a well coordinated group however, you can plan to use every single big cooldown you have in a single short burst window every minute. 
This is of course what would be considered the optimal rotation, which can be very difficult to perform to perfection. So, it is perfectly fine to use the less rigorous and perfectionistic opener and rotation we have built on throughout this guide until you feel ready for this. Without further ado, here's the strict optimal opener and rotation designed for maximizing damage within predictable raid cooldown windows. Up to 9 seconds before the battle begins, use Make Your Shisui. Up to 5 seconds before, you can optionally add True North. Start the fight with Gecko, and if you plan to use a Tincture, a so-called Burst Potion, this is the time. Then use Kasha, weave Ikishoten, then use Yuki Kase and then Midari Setsugeka weaving Senye, followed by Kaishi Setsugeka weaving Make Your Shisui again. Then do Gecko weaving Shinten, Higanbana weaving Shinten again, then Ogi Namikiri weaving Shoha, followed immediately by Kaishi Namikiri, then Kasha weaving Shinten again, Gecko weaving Gyoten, then we finish up with Hakase, Yukikase weaving Shinten, Midare Setsugeka and Kaishi Setsugeka. Now, in the downtime waiting for your cooldowns to ready again, you have enough time for a full Midare Setsugeka and the time to prepare 3 cents for another one. Every minute you have one Meikyu Shisui and one Tsubamagaishi, and you have to reapply Higanbana. Every other minute you additionally have Senye, Ikishoten and Oginamikiri. In a coordinated setting, you should make sure to reach these burst windows exactly with 3 Sen ready and efficiently use all these cooldowns in a burst during your group's cooldowns. After your burst windows, except for the opener, you typically will do a full Mirada Setsugeka and generate 3 Sen too quickly before it is time for the next minute's burst window. To deal with this, you can delay it a number of GCDs by starting your cooldown period with a combination of these filler tricks shown on screen here. Shoha as well as Shinten can be spent whenever they are available. Make sure to keep 25 Kenki for Senye or your dashes. If you wish to optimize further, sometimes you can fit Shoha within raid cooldowns by delaying it slightly. And similarly, you can stockpile some Kenki to use in bursts as well. Now, the general rotation outside of a coordinated team is a lot more focused on optimizing the usage of your tools around the moment rather than fitting them in neat boxes. You can use all your cooldowns as they come up, and remember that you can also use Ikishoten way in advance, as you do have 30 seconds to make use of Okinamikiri. This also applies to the coordinated rotation of course. For some players, the fixed nature and looping effect of the coordinated rotation may make it easier to perform with a lot of practice, whereas the more general rotation relies on being ready for the buttons that come up, as they come up making you a lot more flexible in a boss fight you don't know perfectly from start to finish. For two targets, the good old 3-2 Tengagoken is still perfectly viable. The only difference is that you add all of the cooldowns and tools you have learned throughout all these levels on top. You should use Shoha 1, Shinten and Guren for two targets. You can quick start your 3-2 Tengagoken in the exact same way we learned in the starter guide. Make your Shisui, Gekko, Kasha, Tengagoken and you just add all of the cooldowns and tools as they fit. For three or more targets, you only use your AoE combos and only Tengagoken and of course Okinamikiri. All of the AoE versions of Kenki Spenders, Gurin, Kyuten and Shoha 2 should also be used. After that long talk about the rotation, let's go over stat priorities briefly. Keep in mind that in nearly every single case, item level beats out optimal secondary stats. So you should always prioritize higher item levels first, as long as the item has strength on it. After this, Samurai is perfectly capable of doing the entire cooldown period described in the coordinated group advice. Extra skill speed simply aligns the GCD better, and then adds more filler GCDs. The advantage to having more filler GCDs is of course that boss fights tend to make things go wrong or require you to move out of range at times. So you will sometimes miss out a GCD or two. The recommended skill speed intervals to optimize around are shown on screen now. After figuring out your skill speed, your priority should be critical hit and then determination is a tiny bit better than directed. So given the choice, pick determination. Otherwise, both stats are pretty much equally great. Remember that outside of the most cutting edge of group content, as long as your gear is somewhat up to date to the content you are doing, then you do not have to worry about getting the perfect stats at all. Now that is all for this video, thank you so much for watching. If you want to support me and my channel, you can like the video, leave a comment, subscribe and hit the bell to get notified when next I post a video. 
If you want to keep even more support than that, you can also become a member of the channel. Fun fact, Senye in Japanese consists of two kanji. Sen appears to mean flesh, and the second kanji is kage and on its own means shadow. In context, the kanji is said as ye and can mean effect or impact, meaning that seye could be read as flashing impact or flashing lights.